Welcome, everybody. So we are talking backstage. This has never happened before. The big short guys on one panel. So you guys are in for a treat, and these guys finish each other's sentences. It is amazing. <laughs> um, let's, let's start off, Steve, with, with you. Um, I think everybody wants to know, how much of the movie is, is real? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot. A lot. Okay. Um, you know, the iconic scene where he goes zero, that happened. Danny was sitting next to me. Uh, the scene at S&P happened, the scene where um, he makes that speech. Bill Miller was the person who, was, who was, I was talking to. Mm -hmm. The funny thing was that at, the, at the end of that, at the, after, after that speech, the next speaker was Alan Greenspan. Yeah. Oh. And nobody <laughs> stayed. Everybody left. <laughs> Of course. We were heckling them, actually. Yeah, we were. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that that's out of the way, because everybody wants to know that. Um, it's interesting because everybody thinks of you guys as, you know, you guys short, and that's how you made your name. But in reality, Porter, today, you're much more focused on finding value. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, shorting is just another trying to express a trade, right? And so, you know, if you're, you know, these days, post-COVID when they doubled the money supply, it's kind of hard to short anything, right? And it's, um, you know, so you got to pick and choose your spots. You know, people have expressed it being long Bitcoin as a, as a short trade or long gold or long S&P. Like, there's different ways to, to, to do it. But yes, sadly, we still always short stocks, but uh, sometimes better than others, so. Danny, um, how has the market changed since the days of the big short? I mean. Porter mentioned one extremely big way it's changed. Yeah, so we were together prior to the financial crisis, during financial crisis, and post, and all three were very, very different. And with so much liquidity in the market, as Porter's talking about, you have to respect it. The market structure has changed dramatically. When you have five or six names accounting for 30 to 35 percent, it's not about shorting an indice or being negative on the market. I think it's about finding opportunities, as Porter mentioned, on the long and on the short side. And you can see you have violent moves up, but you have equally violent moves down on certain names. And I think that the majority of money, a lot in this room, can't focus on some of the smaller and mid-cap names, and you can caught off guard. So I think there's opportunities, I guess, for both sides. But the number one thing that has changed to me is market structure um, and index investing and passive has been a major driver. I mean, that's really the big change. And if you think about the three dominant flows in markets, as Danny was saying, um, what happens as a, as a result of that. So liquidity becomes a, a lot more important than fundamentals. Uh, everything gravitates towards the top six. I actually think it's the top 20, 25 names. Uh, in addition to that, if you actually do want an express an opinion that could be volatile, we'll do it in the private space. And gorgeously, if something doesn't go wrong, you just don't mark it, right? So, <laughs> so, so as a result, but it's but, a great business. Uh, it's, it is. It's incredible. It never goes down. The sharp I mean, ratio is just, excellent. Just find a third party to say it's okay. But but for us, we see a tremendous amount of inefficiencies as a result of the, the plumbing and structure dynamic. And there are a lot of names, particularly in value land, which I know is a four-letter word these days, that are tremendous opportunities. Just no one's playing there, and it takes a little bit more time for it to for your views to be expressed. Such as? So, for example, I'll give you a great example. We own one of the largest oil companies in the world called Petrobras. And I could tell you about a year ago, I would mention Petrobras and they would sit and most people, as Porter said, like, I'll express an opinion, chances are you're not going to like it. Uh, Petrobras was up 70% last year and that doesn't include the dividends, right? So there was stuff to do outside in the world of typically where most people play, you just have to do a little bit of additional work and find what they are. Yeah. People talk about you know, the, the emerging markets, and I think it's you know, 23 years now that the, the S&P has beat it. But <clears throat> when, you, when you sort of drill down there and you, and you look at the emerging markets charts, it's such a you know, different um, country mix. And so you got to really do the analysis. And that's, that's how we found Petrobras. And we found Brazil. And like, hey, let's do a little bit more work and figuring it out. And it's two times earnings, you know, a lot of cash flow. Political situation is not as bad. They're actually cutting rates. And so you, you get into a narrative and a story. And that's how, you know, express that trade in, in something different, but big and liquid. And you can put a lot of capital to work. Steve, you're really interested in infrastructure. That's the trade that you mentioned a couple times when you've been on yes. the show the past couple of years. Well, you know, this is a big theme of mine in that 
the government's going to spend $1.2 trillion over the next 10 years. We haven't had an industrial policy in the United States in any, literally anyone's lifetime. Um, there's a lot to do here. And $1.2 trillion is a lot of money. And there's a lot of different areas to, um, to invest in. Danny, where are you invested in right now? I know that we're off stage and UPS is collapsing on the back of its earnings, massive layoffs, and you're like, I'm short it. No, Porter and Vinny are short that. Oh, they're, they're short UPS. <laughs> when I need my IDs, I call Porter and Vinny. They're short side. Long IDs, I'll call Steve. But you know, there's plenty of opportunities. I think we're, we are all, I think, speak for all of us, we're contrarians in terms of yeah. how you try to th think about things. And um, energy has been a sector that Porter and Vinny have been on for a long time, and I think it's an underfollowed, under loved sector, and I think when you talk about value stocks, I think there's opportunity there. Um, the online gambling world, as you know, I've talked about, I'd like to find secular growth stories and find the best companies within them. And so there's a lot of things which have happened where there are still cyclical things occurring in sectors, but a lot of secular sectors that are out there. And to me, that's the most exciting. So people paint me or us as, as bearish. It's not the case. I think sometimes owning the right stocks and not, on the, not owning the other ones can be a form of you know, expressing a bearish view by owning value or underloved things versus owning the things that everyone else loves. So that's kind of how I view it. I will say this, though, that it's a lot more relaxing being long-oriented than it was when we were doing <laughs> our thing. Because I'll give you an example of my day. So I'd wake up in the morning, I'd turn on CNBC, the futures be up, and I'd start cursing at the television. And my wife would do her absolute level best to ignore me. <laughs> you could ask her, she's here. <laughs> and then we'd get to the office, Larry Kudlow would be on television talking about Goldilocks, Porter would throw something at the television, Vinny would curse, Danny would scream, <laughs> and my blood pressure would go up. Today, I turn on the CNBC, the futures are up, and a feeling of bliss overwhelms <laughs> me. And I turn to my wife, who no longer ignores me, and I say, would you like to go out for coffee? She goes, sure. <laughs> it's a different day. This is a lifestyle change for you, A ben. big lifestyle change. <laughs> With the clothes. The clothes, <laughs> the different right? Views. right? Look at you. <laughs> I've never seen Steve so relaxed in my I life. Agree. Honestly, on a day-to-day -day basis of I'm spending the last 24 hours or so. But honestly, it's a different. And it's hard when you're have to, you know, long, short, and have to do it. When you just have to pick the best longs on a relative basis, obviously, Steve's smart enough to do that. That's, a, that's an easy thing. Not an easy thing not to easy. do. But it, no, not easy. No, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's a more relaxing thing to do, I should yeah. say. Sadly, I think Vinny and I are still as angry as ever. Uh, <laughs> skeptical. I, you know, people think you're, you're bearish. Well, I, I'm pretty much skeptical about everything, right? And I, Vinny said it earlier. I can guarantee that anything that I like, everyone in this room hates, and, and vice versa. Like, it's just, I don't know. I but there are different ways to express, express your skepticism, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, Every time something's going to go wrong, the Fed's going to come and bail everyone out. Right. Right. So as a result, don't short a lot. Right. Like, or the only time you can really short a lot is when the Fed does. I apologize for the young people. A Roberto, a Roberto Duran and does no mas, and they cannot save you anymore. And then as a result, you could take your fundamental views that you would like to express as a short and deploy capital. Yeah, but we ain't there yet. But we're not there yet. Exactly. And, there, so, and in the last 20 years, there are only two times really that the Fed. Missed it, right? It was the, when they thought subprime was contained, right. they, they had no idea what was going on. And then, you know, in 22, the inflation scare, they were, you know, they just had blinders on, they couldn't see it. And, and in 2022 was a fantastic year to short stocks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because the Fed was completely, you know, uh, behind the curve. And so when you can catch the Fed flat footed, you know, because they're omnipresent in pretty much all the markets all the time. When you can catch them flat-footed, that's the opportunity to really press the shorts. And that's, you know, that's, you have to be opportunistic about it. Do you think that we're setting up at all in this regime, in this Fed, you know, regime for another sort of big short opportunity? Does that exist or does that not exist in the system right now? Funny, we were out last night talking about it and, and um, you know, we're, we're going to 6% nominal GDP this year and the Fed's, the Fed fund futures say they're going to cut six times. I mean, like... There, there could be a, another bubble happening in... I think if, they'd have to cut, and inflation would have to resurge. Yes. yes. And then you have a Volcker situation. But I'm saying the, the bubble could happen if you'd be cut six right. times that could happen and, and, and stocks just inflate to the moon, right? But I, I mean, don't think Powell's going to do that. I think he lives in utter fear of recreating Volcker. Right. And the interesting variable that we all have to think about, it's coming, is the election. We, we right. know that's an event. Will the Fed be doing different things? as a result of the election. And these are variables that, that come into our heads and minds. Cutting more, cutting less, moving up the cuts? 
my bias would be move up the cuts. Pull forward. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think the one overriding thing for me is that everyone's ignoring the debt, and maybe it won't matter for a while, 34 trillion in debt and what the interest is on that, and markets are moving based upon Janet Yelling issuing 55, 60 billion less in a quarter and tapping the TGA and all these things, and it goes back to the plumbing of the system. So my fear is that everybody's, you know, tilts to the one side of the boat and they own the same names and it's all the same momentum factors that are going on and you're caught off guard. I'll never not be that way, but I have to respect the fact of, of what the market's giving you. And you well, got to take what Well, that sounds like what we are in right now. Correct. Excellent. So I just, I just think that, think about the two things that happened last year, that everyone was caught off guard. Most people were caught off guard in March, right? Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate. All of a sudden, oh, I didn't see it coming. Crisis, crisis, crisis. Fed injects $500 billion. Get to the debt ceiling negotiation, right? What negotiation? We'll just postpone until January 2025. We've already added $2 trillion to debt since then. That's fine. There's a lot of money sloshing in. You have to respect it, I guess. And so readjusting to that new normal of what, it's, someday it's going to matter. Is it me this year? I don't know. You could, so. you could make the argument that, you know, rates got to 5% last year, and, you know, the Fed pivoted hard. Janet Yellen pivoted that she issuing all bills, and, you know, a month later, uh, Powell's talking about, cuts already. I mean, that was a pretty big surprise to Probably the market. Probably as simple as unemployment. Just keep it simple. If unemployment starts to go up, we're, we have an issue. But I'm, now not we don't. <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm not worried. You're so I, I'm you're very so blissful. Zen. It's I, really... I'm just not worried. I mean, uh, with all due respect to Danny, he could be, he could be 100% right. This argument about the deficit has been going on for 40 years. I remember Pete Peterson in the 90s was talking about Oye the deficit is what he would say, or at least I would say oye yes, the deficit. That would be yes. my interpretation of what he would say. And so here we are, 40 years later, we're having the same conversation. And the numbers are a lot bigger, and all you need to do is be right once. But 40 years is a long time. So, you know, until I see real signs that there's a problem, this is not a topic that I really But in terms of the crowding and everybody being on one, in one side of the boat, that is happening now in the markets. So we're seeing that in terms of market structure, big cap tech, et cetera. Does that worry you? Or is nothing worrying no, you? No, doesn't worry you. You're just out for coffee. I told you so relaxed. So people must be thinking that I'm on drugs, but I'm not. <laughs> it's I, I've just become here. a happy-go-lucky kind of a guy. It's refreshing. It's unbelievable. It's very different than in, we were at a fixed income conference in 2007, <laughs> and Steve was speaking, and he goes, I, he was trying to hand out oh, Prozac on the way in for people before he was going to speak. You all need to take something before I speak. That was unbelievable. <laughs> that. Look to your left, look to your right when he was not going to have a job. And the things, you know, depending on your mindset. I he said that. that. Yeah, he said that. I did yeah. say that. There is yeah. something, though, I think, if I, not to take the over here, but I, I you know, I want to go back to 2006 for a second because these guys obviously built their book long short at the time. And when the CDS trade came along, it was just an addition to everything else. But the, I think it's very clear to understand, or want people to understand, to, to short those stocks back then, New Century, accredited, Saxon, the borrows were, if you could get them, were 40%. The implied dividends, even though they weren't going to be paid, were 30%. Right. Our reason to go into that trade, not just as a tool to navigate what was happening, was just a replacement for how expensive the shorts were. And it grew over time. But when we saw what was happening in fixed income, and I think this is going to be clear for this next iteration of the markets. Understanding what's happening in fixed income, I don't care what kind of credit you're looking at, to me is going to be key again because as much as people talk agree. about stock picking, I think it's about bond picking and credit. And we are such a financialized economy that I really think that skill set and those fund managers, I think they're going to lead. This is why he doesn't sleep. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Look at him. He's asleep. So you, so you're on one end of the spectrum. You're on the other. For now. For now. Where are you, Vinny? Who, who is more right? They could both be right. It's they really when, when you, whenever He's you hear an mediator yes, like he always, always. did. <laughs> whenever you hear an argument that people have, it's usually duration of time differential. Yep. Right. I, I guarantee you, when the crap hits the fan, Steve's going to change his mind. Right. And so as a result. I just hear them and I start laughing. I mean, the debt is an issue. Like, like there's no way it's not, right? The only reason why it's not an issue is because we're printing money and somehow, I mean, look. But how does it come to a head this time as opposed to not coming to a head for the past 40 years? Well, the, no, no yeah, one knows yeah, that. Yeah, how does it come to an end? We don't, well, we were getting close to where it was a problem. And then Janet Yellen says, woo, I don't need as many coupon bonds as I used to. I'm going to do bills. And we have an election. We better keep rates down low. So the control part of the economy. So 
you hear me speaking, and obviously, Finney. by the way, this is what the people who own Bitcoin are rooting for. Right, right. Yeah. You, you hear me speaking, you're like, oh, Finney, you're freaking bearish. I'm like, but you express it differently because you know they're not going to let you win until they're forced not to do what they're eventually going to do, which is debase and print it, it, or, 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 or tighten. And then once that you can tighten, then, then, you could, then you could deploy. If you go back to the big short, look, in, in 04, we were just as bearish as Michael Burry was. We just weren't short stocks yet because it, it, was, it, was, it was early. It was early. Yeah. It was all right. And, you know, whether lucky or, we, you know, we got the exact right timing in... in for uh, once. For once in, <laughs> in summer of 06. We put on these, yeah. we, we saw the, 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 the data clearly deteriorating, and that's when we put the trade on. So, you know, you, you just kind of have to be patient and have all these, you know macro themes in the back of your head and you know you'll pull it out of the drawer one time open up the file and put the trade on so how do you express this trade this concern about the debt and how it comes to a head i look at corporate balance sheets and try to avoid companies that are know are going to have to come up for some type of refinancing look at commercial real estate and i'm not trying to play it directly necessarily maybe some of the property reads here but you got to start to look at these you know again people are all about immediate what's right in front of them and i like to think longer term and then discount it back so i'm going to miss a lot of run-ups in certain names that, that Steve will probably get on the long side, and I won't. And, and, but I'm willing to do that because it hasn't really paid in the last few years for the most part. But there's some good stock picking opportunities in 22 to be intellectually curious and to try to, because you'll miss. And in a professional money management world, we see how it works. We see that if you are a long only that's indexed or you know, judged against the S&P 500, you just got to pick the names that you want to overweight versus underweight. But when the chase started last January, you had to keep. You had to. You had to go for it. And when it ended in the year, you had to go for it. The timing of that. So I think this year is going to have a lot of ebbs and flows. And I would say this: if it's, if that's not such a big deal, then why is Janet Yellen basically running policy at this point in November? It was a big moment, right? Changing the tenor of the issuance, and now she did it again yesterday. So this is a. It's a big deal, and they're aware of it. You know, we have so. I won't go in down into the financial plumbing. Again, I'm overthinking. Steve, what you, you I, taught me what, By the way, by the way. <laughs> no, 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 relax. Yeah. I, got a, I got a song in my head. This brought back memories. Oh, boy. We actually listened to it last night at dinner. It's like Bobby Ferrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy. Don't Worry, Be Happy. So yeah. when we used to play this in the office, right, Steve loved the song. Yeah. Danny hated the song. <laughs> right. And yet, we, and me and, of course, Porter were just jingling it and dancing around, and it's bringing, like, you, while he's talking, you're probably, <laughs> just By the way, just to get back to Larry Kudlow, it's really true. When he would get on, he would stay Goldilocks. We, we as a group, we would literally go insane. Yeah. Just absolutely insane. Yeah. There was one other song that was very important during 2006, 7, and 8 that I would sing before Steve would come in. I'd probably be the first one in, because settling, fixed income, trades, looking, whatever. And I would see the market would be up a lot. And my biggest fear, we were all negative, is Steve would come in and want to cover everything just to be nervous. So I would start singing Let It Be by the Beatles, but I would change it to level three. Level three. <laughs> so Steve would say, how are we doing? I'm like, that's eh, fine. Down 20 basis points, probably down 52 at that point. Nothing you can do. I'm like, I would just sing level Let's three, see. level three. <laughs> yeah. so, you were ahead of your time. Like, you yeah, just, look at that. You know, don't mark anything. It's manage, much better. to manage, yeah. so, yeah. Was it a real concern that he would cover too early? No, was, I'm not joking, but no, it would be, there was a lot of swings that were going yeah. on at the time. And standpoint of you didn't want to get caught up in the emotion and, and sometimes it was my job, not just with Steve, but to filter the stuff from the noise. And if, if Europe's rallying and, and you know, Asia was rallying or maybe we were, we were short those markets, you're coming in kind of behind. But what was really interesting about the CDS trade, as Porter just mentioned, the day we put that trade on in July 2006, sure. the next day, the first marks that we got, unlike Burry, we were already up. I, Steve, I think I can safely say if we had been Burry in 2004, we would have been out of that trade within three No, we would, we would have had the patience. Had pay, and right. so it, it gave us more confidence. So I think it helped us be clear-headed yeah. in terms of having that literally every day. So. so I'm curious, has there been a trade since that you guys individually have felt as much conviction in on the long or the short side? Porter. Porter. I don't know. I mean, the, we, we knew. We were, every single one of us knew it and had zero doubt, and we, we, you know, we were the ones who basically, because <clears throat> we did so much financial services, we picked out every single part of that trade, you know, whether it was the, the money market funds and had, we knew they were going to blow up, or the insurance companies, or, you know, you know Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. Like, we, we were over, you know, every single part oh, of that it. trade. I mean, the only thing that, that I mean, it's, it's not the same thing. My, my infrastructure trade, I think, is, is close, but not of that magnitude. And, and Vincent and I, uh, on a percentage basis, m maybe made more money 
buying energy in after energy went negative. In, in That's where I thought you were going. Yeah. yeah. So I tried to tee up. I know. But, 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 team up for that. But still, it's yeah. it, it yeah. you know the, the the big short trade, which is so much bigger. Agreed. And and right. we I mean Massive. and it lasted longer. And and we I mean, you know, we, we were on an island. We did have a lot of fun though, making fun of people. We did. We did. Yeah. We Wall really Street did. people. We still do. Wall Street people. Steve, yeah. we right. still do. Well, true, but not not like that. No. Like that. As you were watching the car wreck. Well, I remember unfolds, the guy from the guy who was head of Aspects Research at Bear Stearns came in to tell us. I remember he said, you know, he said, housing prices in the United States have never gone down since World War II on a national basis, which happened to be actually true. And I said, is that like a law of physics, a law of God, or just a coincidence? <laughs> I got feedback later that he, he, he said, that meeting didn't go well. He said, I, I, I said, no, 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 don't tell him we really enjoyed it, beating you up. <laughs> I, was, I told the story a couple of days ago where, where uh, Kerry Killinger, uh, the CEO of WAMU, came into our office probably like three months before it failed. Right. And he, he came in and he's like white as a ghost. Steve goes, Kerry, looks like you need a hug. <laughs> 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 See, we did shorting with a smile. Yeah, exactly. I would say, no, though, like, from the stuff we learned, there's, there are opportunities today, not harping necessarily on the short side, but when you see tech companies or what they're posing as tech companies that are just finance companies, that's the stuff you want to look for. Such whether as? Upstart, Affirm, those are, those, are, those are finance companies, period, end of story. And some other names I know that Porter Vinny like, you know, like to look at as well, but those are the opportunities. Can a huge fund manager really do anything in those names on the, on the short side? Maybe not, but those are the things where I at least try to help people to not be long them, whether you want to be short them or not, know what you own because that, that's what those are and, and they're nothing else. So those are the opportunities I see that if you do your work granularly, you can, you can make money. Highest conviction trade, Vincent? Right now? Right now. Oh, that's a good question. Should always have that ready. I mean. No, 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 I'm thinking of the throughput. I like a coal name. How about that? Coal. Coal. That is so not politically correct. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't want to uh, power your house? You don't want to oh, power your Tesla? You, you, you want to you know, build, build your cars <laughs> with metallurgical steel? Like, you know. Peabody Energy, BTU. Oh. They're buying back a truckload of stock. Right now, Elliott has been in the name for God knows how long is getting out, and once they do so, it trades it two times EV to EBITDA, and I think it could go up 40 to 70%. Well. Hmm. Porter, how about you? You know, we were, we were talking last night about um, some commodities and how, you, how the ESG movement and, and the lack of, of capital financing has just allowed not a lot of mining to happen. And one, it's done well, but um, uranium has been a great position for us and, and a, had a big run to, it's now 100, but the, the demand versus the supply is, is one of the most imbalanced things I've ever seen, actually. There's no, there's no supply, and a lot of the supply is coming out of Russia, and, and they have serious <coughs> questions about it, and I think there's going to be a lot of utilities in the United States being scrambling because everyone's short uranium, and so it could go short up a lot. Short meaning there's not enough. There's not yeah. enough. Short pounds, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. In Europe as well. That's yes, the they're, they're, if Russia and, decides to turn it off. I know, and, and France is really short uh, uranium, and so they're, they're, they just don't have the pounds available. I mean, mining's hard, right? Getting stuff out of the ground is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, how about you, Danny? I mean, it's. Uh, I was on your show a couple months ago. Um, I didn't mention this name specifically, but within the online gambling world, it's 1.3 billion market cap, genius sports. So you you want to own B two B high margin tech companies within a sector or growth story. It's massive, cash flow positive, over 100 million in cash. Um, and they partner with the NFL, they partner with Amazon. I think the end result one day will be Amazon probably takes them. I don't think there's anything imminent there, but I love that. I really think it's a clean, great story to look at and still on the short side, you know, I, I call it SEAL Team 6 now. It's no longer the MAG 7 or whatever you want to call it because Tesla, I think, has been out of it. And look at the performance. I mean, Steve will tell you, I'm sure he's long most of the six. He's not long Tesla, I would imagine. No. You, you can outperform massively. And I think names like that, they're going to, you are what they thought they were, which is an auto company. So again, can it go back up 10, 20 percent? <coughs> sure, will it be painful? Yes. But I'm willing to stick that out over a period of time. So you know, longer term, I like to think things in the longer term. We mentioned the elections briefly. And I'm curious, Vinny, yeah. uh, 
are we ready for it? Are the markets ready for it? Have we priced in a Trump presidency, for instance? Have we accepted that? No, not yet. I, and I think we are delaying the implementation of portfolio strategy. When does that happen? It's going to get real. I don't know when, exactly yeah. when. But it has to get real. We got November. We, the, the date doesn't change. It's going to happen. And if it starts getting real, I actually think of it as more of a sector rotational mm -hmm. dynamic that if Trump becomes president, what would you want to own? Versus well, you wouldn't want to own solo stocks. No. No. no you, you may not want to own them now. You may not want to own them now, too. Given but finance. you sure won't want to own them if, price, he, if, he, if, he, if, he, if he... And you might president. not want to be long, interestingly enough, defense stocks. Really? Why? Well, That's... I mean, the last three, four years, we've had a lot of kinetic conflict. A tremendous amount. Will it be different? It's an interesting. Trump, I think Trump said he could solve Ukraine in three, in three hours. Two seconds. Yeah. Uh, three Done. or two minutes, whatever. So. <laughs> um, I feel like you're the worrier of the panel, Danny. You know, the yeah. funny thing is, is Adam McKay, the, the director of the movie, thought Danny was the optimist of the really? movie. Really? Yes. Yeah. That upset me. <laughs> <laughs> and Vin, Vinny goes, upset when you're Vinny goes optimist. Who, <laughs> wouldn't, who wouldn't want to be known as an optimist? See, so <laughs> a, a, we went down to Orlando to see it, and they were going to allow us to be on... New Orleans. New Orleans, sorry. And they were going to allow us to be in the movie. So Danny went down there, looked good, and he kept doing outtakes and outtakes. And he just kept saying, well, I'm not an optimist, right? And it's about 10 times, 11 times, 15 times. I'm in the back cracking up, right? And they go, why are you laughing? I go, like, of course, says, who the hell doesn't want to be an optimist? I go, this I guy. I said I was always optimistic about how we were going to do in it. It's actually got cut, obviously. Well, no, what, <laughs> what Adam nailed about him is he was our social chair, right? So he would scurry us along, get us to where we needed to go with our smiles and everything else, and that's what Adam clung on to. Yeah. So, yeah. so sadly, Daddy didn't get the best actor to... Uh, I blame my mother for my worry, Gene. But yeah, I'd like to see what's, you know, what's, what's what? out there. What, what can you see? And that hasn't you know, been the, the most relaxing thing or the most fruitful thing to do because everyone's right in front of them what's right in front of them. So. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, Vinny, Steve, Porter, the big short panel.